what is the theory of everything? What does the theory of everything seek to accomplish? Well, I mean, this is very much a kind of reductionist point of view in the sense that, so it's not a theory. This is not going to explain to you, you know, anything. It doesn't really, this kind of theory, theory this kind of theory of everything we're talking about doesn't ex- say anything interesting, particularly about like macroscopic objects, about what the weather is going to be tomorrow or, you know, things that are happening at this scale. But just what we've discovered is that as you look at um, the universe, it kind of, you know, if you kind of start, break, you can start breaking it apart into, and you, you end up with some fairly simple pieces, quanta, if you like, and and which are doing, which are interacting in some fairly in some fairly simple way, and it's um, it's so what we mean by the theory of everything is a theory that describes all all the obje- all the correct objects you need to describe what's happening in the world and describes how they're interacting with each other at a most fundamental level how you get from that theory to describing some macroscopic incredibly complicated thing is there that becomes again more of an engineering problem and you may need machine learning or you may you know a lot of very different things to do it but well, I don't even n- think it's uh, just engineering it's also science it yeah. one thing that i find um, kind of interesting talking to physicists is is a little bit. There's a a little bit of hubris. So some of the most brilliant people I know are physicists, both philosophy and just in in terms of mathematics, in terms of understanding the world. But there's a kind of uh, either a hubris or what would I call it. Uh, like a confidence that if we have a theory of everything, we will understand everything. Like this is the deepest thing to understand. And I would say, and like the rest is details, right? That's the the old Rutherford thing. Uh, but to me, there's like, this is like a cake or something. There's layers to this thing and each one has a theory of everything. Yeah. Like at, at every le- level from biology, like how life originates, that itself, like complex systems, yeah, like that in itself is like this gigantic thing that requires a theory of everything. And then there's the what in the space of humans, psychology, like intelligence, collective intelligence, the way it emerges among species, that feels like a complex system that requires its own theory of everything. On top of that, is things like in the computing space, artificial intelligence systems, like that feels like it needs a theory of everything. And it's almost like um, once we solve, uh, w- once we come up with a theory of everything that explains the basic laws of physics that gave us the universe, even stuff that's super complex, like uh, how like how the uh, universe might be able to originate, even explaining something that you're not a big fan of, like multiverses or stuff that we don't have any evidence of yet, yeah. still we won't be able to have a strong explanation of uh, why food tastes delicious. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, no. Anyway, I, I, yeah, I agree completely. I mean, this there is something kind of completely wrong with this terminology of theory of everything. It, it, it's not. Um, it's really, in some sense, a very bad term, very hubristic and bad t- terminology because it's not. Um, this is explaining. This is a purely kind of reductionist point of view that you're you're trying to understand cer- certain a certain very specific kind of things which. You know, in principle, other things, you know, emerge from. But to actually understand how anything emerges from this is it, it's ho- it, it can't be understood in terms of this. This underlying fundamental theory is going to be ho- hopeless in terms of kind of telling you what about this um this various emergent behavior. And as you go to different levels of explanation, you're going to need to develop new, you know, different, completely different ideas, completely different ways of thinking, and. I guess there's a famous kind of um, Phil Anderson's slogan is that you know more is different, and that, yeah, so it, and it's just it's it's just yeah even even once you understand how what a couple of things well, if you have a collection of stuff and you understand perfectly well how each thing is interacting with it w- with the others what the whole thing is going to do is just a completely different problem it's just not and you need completely different ways of thinking about it. <laughs>